So what's in the winter update? Well, we've got a couple of new trains, we've got a bargain bridge, a new signal and lots, lots more. Hi, welcome back to Chatham on Railway. I'm Charlie and this time you join me on my winter update. Now, a couple of things in the news I want to deal with quickly. Um, apparently there's a model railway shop that's closed. OK, shall we move on? I mean, that, let's be perfectly honest, these massive box shifters have caused the closure of hundreds of other model railway shops throughout the country due to their tight margins that smaller shops just couldn't compete with. So Hatton's has gone. OK, we move on. Next thing is there's a model railway show that's not on this year and has gone forever. That's Warley. Um, is the, is the hobby in decline or whatever? No, it's not. let's not talk it down. There's been hundreds of YouTubes out there saying, oh, this is this, this. Hey, it's just a show. It's gone. Move on. Right. Something more positive. Now, Acura scale. A couple of weeks ago, I produced a video regarding my Acura scale class 37, which in the opening sequence, I must confess, was a little bit of clickbait there. And it's probably my, my most popular video ever with something like 90,000 views. And if you haven't seen it, there should be a link up here unless you're watching on your smart TV because it won't work. There we are. Right, so let's go back to Oscura Scale because I reached out to them and asked them what was going on and I had this response. Now the video was more or less in two parts. The first being um, a problem that a friend of mine, Lance, had with Hattons because um, uh, he had a Duff Dakota and fair play to Oscura Scale because they changed it. So I shall read um, Acura Scale's response to, to my inquiry, and this comes from Richard Watson, who you may know from New Junction fame. Hi Charlie, thanks for reaching out. We can confirm regarding the warranty replacement DCC chip from our retail partner to the mentioned customer. Being refused was an error on their part and a replacement chip has been dispatched free of charge. I'd like to reassure our customers that if you weather or customise a model, as in that case, this does not affect your warranty for an unrelated component, i.e. a chip, a moat, etc. And fair play to Acura Scale for coming off the fence and admitting that and saying that, yeah, so if you want to stick your snow plows on, you know, we're not going to turn around and say, well, we're not going to exchange the motor. Fair play. Next part was more to do with my issues with the Class 37 and if you read through the, uh, the comments section, then quite a few people have had uh, issues with their locos from Acura Scale. But listen to this one. You may be aware of it, but I think it's a good read. There will always be some duds that escape into the mix. We hope the launching of an industry first time warranty or Acura Care on all current, previously released, and new Acura Scale models will go some way to reassure our valued customers that we're here for the long haul and supporting them is our number one goal. We understand these models are not cheap and our team put their hearts and souls into these models. A dud is the last things we want to see. If you ever have any issues, please don't hesitate to get in touch via our customer support team at support at acurascale.com as your force first point of call. We will always do everything we can to assist you with any issue you may have with your Acura Scale models. Kindest regards, Richard Watson, Digital Marketing Manager, Acura Scale. Fair play, Acura Scale. You know, I was extremely um, surprised by this response. So much so that I, I re replied to Richard and said, gutsy move. I must confess I would have gone for something like a five year warranty rather than a lifetime. A lifetime warranty could be a considerable amount of time, even though, um, what would you say, the enthusiasm in this, uh, in this skill is of an ageing kind of demographic. Right, a demographic, right. So there we go. That's, uh, that's where we are with a Cura Scale. Um, if you have any issues with your Cura Scale models, in the Show More tab, you'll find a link um, that I put in there. Hit the Cura Scale link. It takes you to their homepage, and there, then you will find the... Um, the, de the details about the warranty. Well worth going in there and having a read. So fair play Cura Scale for stumping up. Something to be admired. Well, let's see if the other manufacturers have the guts to do the same. A change of manufacturer now. So let's talk about Backman. 
This little beauty um, is a reverse livery Pullman. There are two power cars and between the two power, car, power cars they need to haul three coaches. Not asking a great deal here are we? Mine happens to have a, uh, a decoder in both, coach, um, in both power cars, both, both fitted with sound. Now, mine keeps losing the drive and I'm sitting it to a friend of mine, I have a service with it, see what's wrong with it, and it's done it yet again. But do you own a set of uh, Backman DCC fitted power cars that are losing their drive? Because I didn't realise the first power car was dragging this one and the three coaches around the layout. And then I realised, hang on a minute, it's struggling here. Um, and there seems to be an issue. So if you have problems with your Backman, Pullmans, leave a note in the comments below. And if there's a reasonable amount, I'll get on to Backman and see what they've got to say for themselves in a similar vein, a similar vein as a Cura scale. We shouldn't have to put up with this. Now, last month, I'd organised a YouTuber's course here down in Somerset at a place called West Camel in the Davis Hall. And I put it out there that anyone wanted to attend and I would keep the numbers down to quite a small unit of 10 people. So 10 people attended, um, a lady and nine gentlemen, and it was aimed at getting people some momentum with their channel. So it was aimed at people with a couple of videos around about sort of zero to 500 subscribers, certainly no one with over a thousand subscribers because that channel has gained momentum and it's out there. So that's where it was aimed. Anyway, these guys came along and we spent about four or five hours going through settings and responses and how to sort of improve your search engine optimization and keywords and descriptions um, and tags, all that kind of stuff. So um, a great success. Now, the next one I'm going to go for is the 12th of May, and I may also do one later in the year. If you were asked to come on the February, March course, then I'm obviously going to have to defer you into that May course. And if you're still, uh, still interested, then drop me an email at chat chadwickmodelrailway at gmail.com and we'll put that together. It was a mistake doing the course in January. The weather was a bit dodgy and I was worried about the floods and snow and all this palaver. And also I was up to my neck in it really because I had a tax return to do as well as research this course. But as it turned out, um, I think it'd be fair to say that people thoroughly enjoyed themselves and came away from it sort of most satisfied that they had the tools now to take their channels forward. Right onward. What's next? Let's look at some of the stuff I bought over the last few months. Now in my childhood I came from Swindon and the South Wales coal trains going on to Didcot came through with their merry-go-round wagons and I didn't really have an understanding of what it was all about and why they didn't have guards vans and why Hymex weren't pulling them and all the, the intricacies of, of the real railway. But I've invested now quite heavily in what you might call HAA hopper wagons, or in my time, it's hop AB, as in hopper air braked. And um, Cavalex and Acura Scale produce some absolutely astounding models, as you can see with these two here. Now, a couple of weeks ago, um, when I was doing my uh, a previous video, I had a friend of mine's pair of his class 20s trundling around, albeit a little bit too quickly, with my hopper train. Um, and as you can see, they are, they are a really interesting train to model. Although, of course, what I've got to do is a great deal of weathering now to pull these models down um, to a more of a, re a realistic look. The Hop AB, the hopper was actually changed um, around about, I think it was 19, sort of 82, 83 time. And the cross members um, were no longer required because the hopper itself was reinforced and the rivet details changed and all this sort of stuff. But fundamentally, it's the same wagon. It's just that for, for me, because it's a priest tops era, I need the hop AB rather than the newer HAA, if that makes any sense at all. Anyway, it's a great project for the future with all the various Hornby models and the Cavalex and the Acura scale models to get them all together, put them out into trains and do a comprehensive history and review of those models. So that's something I hope to look forward to doing sort of in the late spring, early summer. And if I can ask for your help here, because if you have any early photographs of the Hop ABs or the early HAAs with the cross members, or of course video trundling around these days, then please let me know at chadwickmodelrailway at gmail.com. 
Um, it's very difficult to research it because there's so many, um, the intricacies of copyright um, infringement, let's say. So if you've got anything that could come in handy, then please let me know. Of course, you don't have to spend vast amount of money on our layouts. Um, I went along to the Royal Bath and West Showground Toy and Train Fair on Sunday and there's lots of bargains to be had. And here's a brand new Hornby Scaledale Works Office that I picked up for £22. And with a little bit of careful weathering and a few additions, I'm sure it will find a, a nice little place at Chadwick. Also there was, I can't stop doing this, was a bridge. Um, a little bowstring, bowstring bridge for a cost of £8. Lovely. That, that was with the bubble wrap and the elastic bands to look after it. So this is um, not ideally suited perhaps, but I'm, I'm kind of poised on which, one, which bridge to use over here on the gap uh, between the tracks that run to the freight yard. I can't decide whether to use something like this bowstring bridge or this girder bridge and perhaps you could help me to try and decide. Now changing tack from her I'd like to thank Jenny Kirk and her illustrious band The Followers because she had a competition running on various aspects of railway modelling and people were voting in for what they consider to be the best wagon, best loco etc and also the best YouTuber and I was fortunate enough to win so Jenny thank you very much but more importantly thanks for the people who voted. Now one major purchase which I have received is a signal from Absolute Aspects and make no bones about it these are the top of the range signals and they really don't come cheap and nor should they there's a great deal of workmanship that goes into this. Now the particular design I asked them to produce was that based upon a signal in Weymouth station and it's two three aspect signals with position lights however in my case with the branch line station the position lights aren't required. Now it really is a decent piece of engineering and as you can see it's got the ID plates uh, fitted as well with CMR 124 and 126. Now I've just wired up just two of the lights there to turn those on and you can see a yellow and a red and it really is a decent acquisition. If I turn it around so you can see um, the rear with the ladders yeah it's just plain down to earth lovely really. Anyway let's pop it in the branch line station so you can see where it ought to go. And here is its intended position. Not dissimilar to Weymouth at the end of platforms one and two. Obviously it will be sunk into the platforms so the base becomes level. So there is some wiring to be carried out prior to the assembly of the final positions of these boards. And looking along the centre of the screen we can see the board joints and the signal actually sits to the left of the board joints so it needs to be installed on the edge of the platform prior to the installation of the main branch line station. Well our hopper train has now come up from the deeps and sits and waits at a signal, this time being hauled by a class 47. Now please excuse the head codes during this little exercise. So she waits at the signal for the DMU to come through on her way from the branch line station through to platform three. It's worth mentioning that this is one of the very old Ringfield motor Backman editions I believe in need of a little TLC. This now frees up the path for our class 47.
Now, as no doubt you've noticed, I've invested quite heavily in some Mercuriscale 21 ton mineral wagons. Um, these are the vacuum braked version, um, and I must confess they fit well in with Chadwick, and they were known to uh, to work in fixed rakes, especially coming out of South Wales again, so fixed rakes, but not just the 21 tonnes, they also mixed up with 16 tonnes, hence, as you could see on that little bit of footage when they were running around the layout. These clearly need a lot of work, a lot of weathering um, to be done, but it's another uh, project again for a video um, later on in the spring sort of in summer. And as I mentioned before about the old HAA or hop A, -A Bs, um, if you've got any footage of these things running, I will be extremely grateful. Getting, getting hold of video is extremely difficult, but even, um, even photos, because most people take a photograph of the nice shiny engine on the front, and the actual makeup of the train seems to get missed by. There are also, there's obviously people like Paul Bartlett with his excellent collection of photos, but they tend to be of individual wagons rather than complete trains. So your assistance would be much appreciated. Right, now let's just move on quickly to what I intend to do to the layout itself. As you may be aware, access to the freight yard is via a set of points here by the signal box. And then we're using the Woodland Scenics polystyrene risers. And in next to no time, the track peters out. And that's as far as I've sort of gone with it. And then we need to come up around this curve here. And on this piece of plywood is going to go a, an agricultural installation, whether it be farm buildings, that sort of thing. And then, of course, it will go across and then we need to uh, get across a bridge here for the river that will run underneath. So there's the bridge decision and then along the top of the Celotex and into the freight yard. Now building that line and putting that track right around the outside up to that freight yard isn't such a major evolution. Obviously there is some work to be done around the bridge and then the landscape to go with it and the retaining wall, all that sort of thing has to be taken into consideration. But I can't really develop the freight yard until the line that goes to it is complete. Obviously then the next step is the freight yard and as the freight yard develops then I can do the retaining walls and then sort of backfill into this side with a TMD to get the lands, land form right there. So that's the way it sort of shapes up for the spring and early summer but along with developing um, the new trains i.e. The, the, the hopper train and the 21 ton mineral wagon train and again if I can emphasise if you've got any images or know anybody with them then please drop me a line. Don't forget, if you're interested in the YouTubers course, I'll leave the details down below and hopefully I'll see you in a couple of weeks time. Now to keep you busy, there's a video here and here. And if you'd like to become a patron, help support the channel, then there's the patron button. There's the button if you want to become a subscriber and I'll see you in two weeks time. Thanks a lot. Take care. Bye bye.